start stream. Start stream. Good. Still have. Yep. Here it goes. Up. Oh, I think we're live. All right. Sounds good. Live. Yeah. Cool. Here we are. Nice. Let's show them what we're working with. Here. All right. Cool. Well, welcome everybody. This is uh, Rich with Ryan, Rich and Ryan with Music Medic. We are uh, going to do a little review of all of our Cork products that we have on this Friday live product video session. We are going to also have a bonus tip Ooh. at some point. We did a Wednesday Wisdom video where we showed you how to work with different types of natural cork. And today we're going to talk about the products and a little bit of their technical aspects. And I just wanted to ask you all, uh, what cork products do you use? in repair? Uh, what applications do you use them for? And is there any sort of um, cork product that maybe you would like us to either talk about or carry uh, in the future? So the first thing that we are going to talk about today is natural cork sheets. So natural, natural cork sheets are kind of an industry standard in woodwind repair. Uh, they are sold in a, a few different sizes, 1 16th being the most common one because that's what tenon corks for clarinets and uh, sax neck corks are typically made from. Um, so we sell them in a variety of thicknesses. And these natural cork is very easy to work with. It's very easy to cut with a razor blade. Often you will just score it and then snap it off. Um, it's very easy to sand with different grades of uh, abrasives, sandpaper, etc. Um, for the most part, uh, it stays fairly uh, hydrated if you live in a place that is, well, fairly humid. But if you live in a dry climate, you may need to hydrate your cork. Um, your cork. Yeah. Um, and then, so Ryan, uh, you know, we did a few examples on Wednesday, but do you have any maybe a couple of examples of how to work with natural cork, just super basic stuff, like that. say if a beginner is watching this. Sure, sure. The, the, the first thing, real basic when you're dealing with natural cork and cutting it is to use a fresh razor blade. Uh, we tend to keep, you know, um, you know, boxes of 100 razor blades um, by our benches. And so when I'm cutting cork for the first time, I will always use a fresh razor blade, no exceptions. If it's sitting on my bench and I'm not sure, when there is any doubt, there is no doubt, just go ahead and just put these in your in your recycling and in your sharps container. You can just grab a fresh razor blade. Um, there we are. And then it makes it cutting, you know, the cork much, much easier, especially having a clean, nice slice. So that, that would be my first tip is, is always use and that. And the other thing is hold on to this. This little oh. cardboard sleeve that you got your razor blade because there may be a bonus tip later that have to do with it. There you are. <laughs> awesome. Alrighty. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the different types of flute head corks and the different types of pre-cut uh, corks that we use and have developed here at Music Medic. Um, for our flute head corks, we have two different grades. We have the Pro flute head cork, which is Ryan is showing you up close. And then we have the standard flute head cork, which is that one right there. The standard cork has a lot more pores exposed, um, a pithy, pithy it's, cells. It's a yes. lot more pithy cells. And the le the one on the other side is a little more clear green. That's because the cells have been filled in with cork dust. Now our sh cork sheets are also the same. We take cork dust and we press that into the cork sheets to fill any holes. And so that's called a press filled uh, cork sheet. And that's basically industry standard. Um, if you have a really thin piece of cork, you might see more holes in it because it's hard to get that cork dust to stay in there. Uh, the other, that's just an aside, the other type of flute head cork we have is the beveled from our supplier so that we could make it so that you could buy pre-beveled and pre-cut tenon and neck corks cheaper than you could make them yourself. So Music Medic offers bulk packs of tenon corks and bulk packs of sax neck corks. The bevel is really, uh, actually really clean and it's really well made to be honest it's it's everybody has their method for putting a bevel on a tenon cork but or a neck cork but you don't have to do that you can just get one of these and it saves you a, a significant amount of time you don't have any material loss um, 
And the other, what's the other thing we have there? Some, we have we cork pads. Cork pads. Cork pads are used often in high woodwinds or like uh, the top joint of a clarinet. And with a cork pad, you want to make sure there is no grain or pithy cells on the face. So that's what you can see in the in the shot there. So Ryan is showing you cork pads that are really clear, and that's what we uh, that's what we stock. We just have a professional quality cork pad. It doesn't have any grain showing so that it doesn't leak or be compromised in any way when it's when it's in the instrument so it's going to seal up well. And we sell those, I think, from 7 to 15 millimeters in diameter. All right, now the next that we, we're going to look at, Ryan, is the tech cork. Can you show them the tech cork on the, sure. on the on the camera there? Tech cork is a cork that is... Uh, a a composite it's got some rubber and cork mixed in it and tech cork is something that music medic came out with first in the in the band repair trade um, this cork that we have and that we supply is specially made for the band repair trade other types of this cork uh, is not made for the band repair trade and it it, it can leak oil and that's going to break down the adhesives uh, that you use to to install this. So our tech cork uh, that we've been selling for, for a, over a decade now, it's not a gasket material. It is an original uh, formula. I, I would think so. <laughs> proprietary formula. <laughs> that we use, and it's really consistent. And tech cork is a little different than standard or uh, natural cork in that it doesn't compress over time. It's not quite as easy to shape or sand. Uh, you can still adjust it with the standard uh abrasives just like you would uh natural cork and um brian is there anything i'm missing with that no it is great it's one of those things again having a fresh sharp razor blade because it is a little bit tougher to cut um it is a little bit tougher to sand but if you uh, watched one of our uh, wednesday wisdom videos uh, a tip we gave is to take um either teflon or packing tape and glue it to the back of your sandpaper that way it's a little bit easier um, to sand, especially if you're getting in between like a the body and a key foot, you want to really contour those that key to it. Um, just having that that little bit of Teflon on the back of the sandpaper um, makes it a little bit easier to to sand tech cork. And then, um, as far as using it on key feet, what is the other material you use tech cork with? Like, uh, say, on like a Mark VI saxophone, um, if you're doing the right hand, you have tech cork. What what thickness of tech cork do you? typically use and what's the other materials you might use with it uh that's a great question i will typically use um uh ultra suede in conjunction with tech cork for key feet let's say right hand on a mark six tenor um and i do that because the tech cork is um it doesn't compress so it stays in adjustment a lot longer especially when you're using this as you know a uh, pad timing material cool so you want things to stay in regulation i will use ultra soy with that um and the typical the, the most common sizes i'm using on on tech cork is like a 0 0.3 0 0.4 um you know 0.6 and 1.0 and we have a variety as you can see a variety of sizes of tech cork but those are probably the most used sizes that i i use okay and tech cork is sold in, in tenths of a millimeter natural cork is sold in fractions typically but we also have the millimeter equivalents on the website and um, uh, as far as adhesives go uh, ryan let's just talk can you change the shot a little bit so we can just show them the the front facing we have a couple of adhesives that we like to use with um, with cork products one of them is going to be contact cement so there's lots of different kinds of contact cement available. We sell it. We sell it in these little bottles that Ryan has. And we just came out with this little bottle when we were selling our woodwind repair kits and customers said, hey, we love that little bottle. So it has a brush cap and the small amount that's in there doesn't dry out as quickly as a larger can that we offer. So this is a, uh, we also sell a four ounce can of contact cement and that's got a, uh, you wanted to show them that. That's got a larger brush to it. Um, and so that's going to, you know, many technicians are used to using this style of can because they like to change the viscosity of their, um, of their contact cement with the solvent. And so the metal can allows them to do that. Now, Ryan, you had a tip uh, about the shaping the brush I, I did i really like this is actually what i use i use the small bottle on my bench all the time i like the small bottle because again it doesn't dry out i like the small brush but some techs really like the the large can 
Um, what you can do is, let's say you're trying to uh, apply a little bit of glue to a tight area. Let's say, you know, the this area on the clarinet mouthpiece. Let's say you're re-gluing this. Well, this brush is, is very wide. Um, what I've actually done in the past is I've taken a razor blade and I've actually cut down some of the bristles. Like you can actually shape it too. You can see how this is kind of fan shaped. You can actually get in there, put a, put a you know a chisel tip on it uh, or whatever, and it just makes applying glue to tighter areas just a little bit easier. So that's that's a bonus tip for you all. Sweet. Now there's also a couple of different super glues that we carry. We carry uh, several different super glues, but the two viscosities that we like to use with. Uh, cork or or tech cork is going to be the purple label which is i think is the medium and the red which is the thick extra, or yeah. or is it called extra, extra thick, thick. Extra, extra thick not just thick it's extra thick <laughs> and uh it's like your gravy i like extra thick gravy yes. I don't know, it's just my style some people like to thin it out anyway the, the extra thick is similar to like a gel uh super glue that you might see like the loctite gel ours is that viscosity so some technicians like to use that uh, the one that we don't really recommend for uh, gluing corks on is the super thin um, uh, uh, super glue. That That's not something that we typically use. Right, yeah. It's either going to be the medium or the extra thick for gluing materials. And the other type of contact cement that I forgot was, uh, so there's a, there's a kind of a tip with contact cement is you got to use the flammable kind. Uh, that's what we recommend. That's what we sell. The other kind that's flammable is barge. And we sell this on the website. We, we have it on Amazon. Um, you can get it, you know, pretty much anywhere. But Barge is a good brand that we've used over the years and that we recommend. So with contact cement, the key thing is if you're out at the hardware store, make sure it's flammable. And if you want to get little bottles of it, we have them. Or, you know, the Barge is good, but it, it just comes in tubes. So it doesn't have the little brush cap. The brush cap is actually pretty essential for applying to. It is nice. Yeah. Remember, folks, I told you to hold on to this little guy here. Now, what is that? Uh, this is this is the the little cardboard, you know. Oh, okay. For your for your razor blade, but what you can do with this when you're applying your contact cement, you can put some on, and then you can use this to really spread it out. That's like your baker's spatula. It or is. It's like a spatula. <laughs> you know, we also heard other tips. Some great <laughs> technicians chimed <laughs> in. They said you can also use an old reed, or you can oh, use, yeah. you can use a brand new reed if you want. I mean. One you currently use, but I really like these to, to spread out the glue. Just makes it a little bit easier for drying, especially when you have a nice thin coat. So that's another another bonus tip. Sweet. And those things are disposable. You don't have Absolutely. to deal with cleanup. Yep. You don't have to get it on your finger. A lot of times we'll use our pinky here in the in the pro shop. Um, but yeah, just using that, spread it out, and then you can just throw it away. Nice. I did have a couple of questions for you, Ryan. Um, for tech cork, some people are curious about what type of adhesive to use. What do you use when you're just using tech cork on an instrument? When I'm using tech cork, I will use just regular contact cement. In fact, I use this exact bottle right here. Um, these small bottles. What you'll have to get, what you're going to have to do is just apply contact the cement to both sides, let it dry, um, and when it dries, you see how it has this sheen. When it dries, it'll look dull. So that's mm. how you'll know when it's when it's ready to be stuck together. Um, another tip is I will take my, my pinky and if I can just lightly tap it and not have any glue stick to my pinky, uh, I know it's ready. Here I can see there's there's some, so this needs a little bit more drying before it's ready. Cool. And then as far as um, in the previous video, we talked about uh, creating or making your own palm key risers with natural corks where you, yes. you laminate the cork together. Is that something that you can do with tech cork? And, and You can, absolutely. Yeah, you can take the larger size, really any size, uh, but I would probably take the larger thickness, which is like a 2.6 um, millimeter thickness of tech cork. But yeah, you can actually do the same thing with tech cork if you don't want to make them out of natural cork but here's a natural cork riser uh, we all know how these little rubber ones are great but they tend to slide off um, but what you would do with this you would just trim it to size i hollow out the inside so it fits flush against the palm key um, and then what i will use is i will actually epoxy this whole thing to the key and we're going to have to do another video on how to uh, install palm key risers because we have a couple that we manufacture here and using cork for side keys is a really good technique that Ryan in the Saks Pro Shop has done for years and years. Yeah, um, well, great. I, I don't have any more questions, guys. Uh, so if you have any uh, 
products that you would like us to see come out or feature in the next uh, Friday Live, feel free to send us a message, uh, comment on the video, share it around, be sure to like and subscribe to Music Medic. Um, and like I said, just reach out to us if you need or want to see anything else. And until next time, happy repairing.